It's really an absolute pleasure to be here with all of you today. Uh, I first came to the site in 2015 and uh, met Carol Mary Reed and her team and we began uh, pursuing the competition which ultimately allowed us to uh, carry through the, and develop the concept design for the Riverwalk. And I remember walking onto site, we were kind of all gathering there by the, the, uh, the gates at the end of Main Street. And I just grabbed the arm of the person next to me, who I didn't know, and I said, this is an amazing place. I can't believe I'm here. This is everything I you know, ever hoped to be a part of. And he was like, oh, okay, that's great. And I just went on to like, <laughs> and it turned out later that it was, it was nice to have met him. He was one of the local journalists in Portland. So he like, he like wrote a little bit about our project. Um, so I am a, a partner uh, at Snowhead and Landscape Architect. Um, let's see. Uh, and I, I won't spend a lot of time talking about us uh, because it's not about us today, but uh, just that we, we are an international practice that brings a, a, a multiple disciplines of designers together to think about places. And our work is really rooted in uh, connection to place and to landscape and to the people who, and the history of those places. So that's really been, um, I think, in fact, this is not the slideshow that I wanted to show today, so I just will very quickly skip through this part because this is for a different slideshow. But the slides will come here in a second. Um, so this is just giving you a little bit of a hint of work we've done around the world and the disciplines of designers that are part of our group. Okay, here we are. Uh, so You've heard a lot today about uh, the context and the history and everyone who has had important connection and role in getting us to this point where we are today. So I will focus on the design. I would love to show you, you know, a hundred slides and spend all day because I could uh, to explain just a little bit about the process and how we got where we are. Um, but I will try to not do that since I have 15 minutes. Uh, but we, we worked together very closely with a group of designers and all of the partners and collaborators that have been mentioned earlier today uh, to, to get to a concept design that really, uh, we believe, captures uh, the four core values that were set forward in the initial visioning and framework. And I want to reinforce how important that has been to us and to the development of the design. And I know they've been mentioned several times today, but that's because they are so important. Um, we really uh, very quickly adopted these and, and uh, began to see that this is the foundation of a shared language for all of us to speak to the potential that this place has and to uh, build uh, a, an experience that is uh, that everyone can find something that they will connect to. And we were out on site earlier with a, um, a smaller group and some who hadn't been on site before. I think uh, Carol may, maybe even mentioned this that, uh, and I've spoken with several of you today that um, this is a a place that has such a tremendous complex history uh, that. One of the things we found really important from the very beginning was to essentially do our very best to reveal what's already here. That this design that we've proposed is very much about uh, uh, celebrating what exists and essentially not messing it up. Uh, so we're hoping that together as we move forward, we can, is, uh, what we often describe as peeling back the layers and embracing the beauty of what's already here. And I'll explain a little bit about how we imagine doing that. Um, this is one of the early photos from one of our workshops where we began to think about the complexities of the site and the place. Um, it's worth noting that when we were first thinking about the, uh, our proposal when we were entering into the competition phase, there were three really wonderful questions that were asked of us that also uh, resonate uh, today and carry forward in, in the proposal and, and how we've thought about uh, the design. The first one was, what inspires you? And we talked a lot about uh, the, the cross-section, the three-dimensionality of this place. And we had gone out on the water, we had been exploring the site, we had been looking at 
uh, this place. And we realized that uh, you're really missing a lot if you don't think about it as a three-dimensional experience. And so uh, this is one image looking at the, um, uh, one of the historic tail races and sort of the, the center of the site just to start to express that uh, a lot of what we could learn and, and capture in the design was by really carefully looking at what's already in place. Uh, we were also asked um, to think about uh, materiality, and a couple others have touched on this this morning, that when we came back to answer that question, we said, well, of course there are incredible physical materials on site today. There's the geology, the basalt, the water, uh, there's the industrial uh, materials, concrete and steel, etc. But we also said, the sensory experience, the ephemeral qualities of the site are as much uh, the materiality that we should be thinking about and working with as any other physical material, as are the activities and the people and the plants and animals. That, that materiality is the, the how we engage in this place. And that may be a little bit more abstract, but as we move into this uh, question of activation and programming and how uh, we inhabit uh, uh, this place in the future, uh, we think that ma materiality, it does capture uh, all of those qualities. And then the last question we were asked, which surprisingly was the hardest, but it's actually the simplest when you finally figure it out, is what is the spirit of this place? I, I wonder if, uh, I think Jim maybe had to leave, but I feel like he might have had a little bit to do with that question, I'm not sure, probably others in the room too. Uh, we really pondered that for a long time. What is the spirit of this place? And our response was, uh, ultimately was the recognition that water is the essence of everything that has ever happened here. So not only the, the uh, presence of the falls, but much of what you've heard this morning about the history of uh, culture, and of, of the tribes, of fishing, of um, living here at this site, and the wildlife and, and habitat, uh, and even the industry that later came. Water is the source of all of that. Uh, so we took those ideas forward. We very quickly uh, came to a couple simple foundational idea, uh, um, ideas that drove the design. Uh, one is that this is uh, why we call it a river walk. We even talked about whether it should be named a river walk. Why we call it a river walk, it is not a pathway. Uh, we all very quickly began to think about it as a space that weaves in and out as you move along uh, main, between Main Street and the riverfront and downtown and the um, closest access point to the falls, uh, that is very spatial. We also said, again, uh, it, it's a missed opportunity if you only think about walking along the surface, that the complex industry and structures and the, the very geology uh, actually create a, a three-dimensional space, again, this idea of cross-section, that visitors should be able to move up and down and get close to the water or bring the water up to them. Uh, the existing structures could be used as a part of, uh, repurposed as a part of that experience, that, that the river walk is a place and it is an experience. It's worth uh, talking a little bit about uh, our process, and this just highlights a little bit about the uh, community and stakeholder outreach that we went through uh, to ultimately um, achieve a final concept design in mid, uh, mid summer of 2017. Uh, we did have several uh, public engagement events. Uh, they averaged between 600 and 800 people who came to talk to us about uh, not only, um, as was mentioned earlier, not only the types of activities that people might want to do here one day, but what would they, what are the, the qualities or experiences, what are the uh, opportunities that they could imagine. And remember, many of these people that were coming to these events had never set foot on site, so they'd seen it maybe from up here or um, by you know, peering in from, from the end of Main Street. So it, it wouldn't make sense to go to them and say, you know, where do you want to do X, Y, or Z, but more uh, asking them to dream with us. 
And we had tremendous response, and it was incredibly uh, productive conversation to begin to imagine um, qualities and characteristics and uh, potentials for a place that, in a sense, was so complex and so mysterious that I, I think it allowed all of us to, to dream really big. Out of those conversations, we came to what we refer to as the key uses. And if you can't see them in the back, um, a couple of them are, are um, relatively expected, like having paths and walkways and trails and river-related activities. But we also uh, agreed with the community members that uh, habitat and, and natural restoration areas, that the PGE dam operations, that honoring the past, present, and future of the uh, native people of this area, uh, all of, and, and economic redevelopment, all of these are key uses and activities that, that have a place on the site. So in a sense, this elaborated on uh, the four core values to start to help us think about, um, again, uh, Carol, I think, showed us this earlier, to think about how we could begin to imagine the Riverwalk as a place that's dynamic, that's ever-changing, that's seasonally varied, and is, is home for all uh, many different uh, living creatures, not only humans, but um, plants and animals, and that this would have an ebb and flow and be constantly changing. And again, uh, it's very seasonal, and most of you are quite familiar, that your experience when you go to see the falls on one day, you could go back the next day, and it, it can be a completely different place. And, and that's uh, quite fundamental to what we're hoping to achieve, that, that you, visitors can come back time and time again, and they might discover something new or have a completely new uh, memory that they uh, take, go away with. So these are just some examples of some of that process where we took those key uses and we began to envision where those uses might happen in different parts of the site. So um, just as one sample, this is the area we often refer to as the yard, which is really in the center uh, of the site and kind of geographically uh, near the Pipe Chase and Mill O. And we began to uh, talk about how you could have those uses overlapping. We went back to the community. In addition to doing large outreach meetings, we uh, also had focused stakeholder meetings. We had online surveys. So there were a variety of tools to ask people for feedback. And we tried to have the same materials at the meeting, the large meetings, also available online so that people who maybe couldn't be there those nights uh, could respond. And we would take uh, uh, variations, uh, thinking about some of the key questions that we heard people asking. That, um, in this example, um, one area along the river walk would we want to have a, a new um, uh, a dock for boat launching, or would we want that to be a restored habitat area, or would we imagine it being a gathering space? And we sat at tables like this, and we worked with the community to talk about what the benefits and challenges of those different ideas would be. And we also uh, took, used imagery to talk about materiality and character. Oh, OK, and I need to go faster. Um, and hear from them um, what that, uh, what the river walk would be constructed from. And it's also worth noting that um, through this process, we were setting a framework for uh, uh, an interpretive framework plan. The basis of that will be the foundation for carrying uh, this work forward that we're all embarking upon. Uh, but there were three key ideas. Narration being uh, the idea about uh, telling stories through uh, wayfinding or signage or uh, people who are taking others on tours. Uh, immersion, uh, it meaning that can we simply place you into uh, experiences on the site that help recall uh, some of those varied histories, and there's many histories, there are many histories. Uh, or reintroduction, whether it's materials or activities, uh, um, programming that can take place that harken back to some of the activities that happened here in the past. 
So with that, I'll go kind of quickly through imagery that you've probably seen uh, to talk about how um, this approach was really the idea of taking a very complex place that we all know quite well today uh, and transforming it through an, an idea about simplicity. And what we mean by that is by um, careful removals and editing what's already there and very minimally adding in order to create uh, connections or safe passage, that the design itself is really about editing, that we're, we're not proposing lots of new stuff. In fact, in our minds, the less that we can add that's new, the better, and the more that we can embrace what's already there, the stronger the design will be. So if we move along the, the riverfront towards the falls, I just have a series of existing images to show you how we started to envision uh, removing uh, areas where maybe uh, fill had been introduced, to reintroduce historic tail races as habitat areas, to add uh, what we call explorer trails that land on existing foundations to, to provide connections. Uh, by really exploring, we climbed in and out and all around this place. Um, we discovered that there are places where you can uh, peel back some of the existing layers, again, to create areas for habitat, to reuse structures uh, as overlooks and gathering spaces. This is called the pipe chase today. You don't even know it's there if you're standing on the site because it's under your feet if you're in the yarn. But that could become a porch that's an overlook looking out at the water. This is inside that pipe chase. Opening up structures like Mill O to become public spaces that are partially uh, um, protected from the environment. So if it's a cold day or a rainy day, that, that you could still have public gatherings and activities. That just peeling off the facades, the layers of some of these buildings reveal pretty dramatic structure and, and uh, uh, components that people might like to visit and see. So this is looking at the area that we uh, are focusing on for the uh, phase one. And that by thinking of it this way, uh, people would be able to come to the site, occupy all three dimensions, move up and down, imagining what people often will say are buildings or structures as a part of a landscape, as a part of a public experience. That the, Again, the Riverwalk has that three dimensionality. So that ultimately, you can be drawn out towards the falls through a series of experiences. <coughs> this is looking at a path that connects to the clarifier. And you can see the poly powerhouse in the distance. Uh, working very closely with all of the different partners and stakeholders, and PGE was very key in these conversations to understand the operations of the dam. That, um, that this is not only a post-industrial site or a, a post-natural site, but it's an operating industry that PGE go today, and we saw it today, they're out there and they're um, uh, doing work on the dam to clean out debris, that we need to share this space. So uh, connecting, uh, walk, using walkways and added moments to make connections out to the um, overlook so that we can share these spaces and life can go on and, and, um, and people will be welcome at all times of year. So ultimately, I'll end here. I probably talked a little bit long, but uh, I'll end here uh, to say that the, the ultimate goal in our mind uh, was touched on earlier. The, the idea that the sensory experience is foundational to uh, the people visiting this place in the future. That you can feel the mist on your skin, that you can, touch, you can dip your toes in the water, that you can feel the incredible history and the sense of this place and the power that inspires, I think, all of us that are in the room and all of the energy that you, you feel today when you talk with people. So thank you.